Hey all here OS Reviews, you're watching our video review of the Honor Magic Watch 2 Sports Smartwatch here in 2021. So the Magic Watch 2 actually came out several months back, but it's still the current generation model from Honor, which is a subsidiary of Huawei. Sells for under $200, can sometimes be on sale for less than that, and so it's a competitor to the likes of, say, Samsung Galaxy smartwatches, as well as Amazfit's GTR series of smartwatches like the GTR2, which is pretty neck-to-neck -neck when it comes to price point as well as functions that it can support. So it's mainly going to be a difference in terms of the aesthetics and the design, as well as the ecosystem that these smartwatches are offered as. So taking a closer look at the design, it does have a very substantial build since the body here is constructed out of stainless steel. Despite being a very slim smartwatch compared to say something like a Android Wear powered TicWatch Pro as you can see there, it is a lot heavier and denser than you'll think just by looking at the size alone. In fact, compared to a very similar dimensions of the Amazfit GTR2, this thing is significantly more hefty as you're picking it up. The screen is perfectly round and measures 1.4 inches diagonally. It, the AMOLED gives it very punchy and saturated looking colors as expected compared to the competition. And we do have a microphone as well as a speaker built on in which allows you to answer phone calls as well as uh, listen to music using the speaker as well. There is around four gigs of built-in offline storage, which means you can use it like an MP3 player. You can drag some songs onto this thing and then you Use it when you're running outside without even connecting it to a phone. Then on the rear, we have a very familiar array of sensors that allows us to both charge the smartwatch using this magnetic cradle that it comes with. The bands, of course, can also be removed and swapped for different designs if you prefer. Feels quite comfortable. The buckle here, which says Honor, is also constructed out of aluminum. Overall, it is built very well. In terms of the crown keys, there's two of them, just like with the Amazfit GTR2, so this can allow us to go through different controls, such as opening up our list of full applications, as well as uh, checking out different sports activities that we can begin tracking. Now there is kind of markings deliberately on the sides or bezels of the screen that gives it more of a uh, slightly more rugged appearance. Plenty of fine details going on, and so from a design perspective, I do think the hardware might be a tad stronger on the Magic Watch 2 compared to Amazfit's GTR 2 although it is down to personal taste at the end of the day. The portion covering up the circular screen here is actually completely flat, but it curves off at the edges downwards uh, towards the sides of the bezels, as you can see there. So it has almost a chamfer to the glass that is being made compared to the Amazfit GTR series that has more of a bubble-like appearance that is kind of curved upwards. So the main screen portion also has a slight taper versus on here, the screen part is flat, but the sides here has a slight chamfer. Small difference it's hard to notice unless you pick it up and try it out. So now moving into the software experience, again the smartwatch here is powered by the same OS that we've seen on other Huawei and Honor wearables in the past. It's not Android Wear, so it is a bit more light and doesn't have quite as much customization in terms of apps, but you are able to track your basic sports and activities at a quick glance, and it is quite simple and easy to use at the end of the day, feeling overall responsive enough to navigate without really any problems. I can swipe down to access some quick shortcuts, things like a do not disturb mode, setting up different alarms, as well as jumping into more advanced settings, swiping up to take a look at notifications and missed messages. Although you aren't able to reply back to those messages, there is no keyboard to do that. Uh, so that is one thing to keep in mind. Now otherwise we can swipe into this carousel to take a look at my resting heart rate, continuously tracked during the day, as well as stress monitoring that can also be tracked. Once more to take a look at your current weather and your location, that is also nicely showing up with a visualization as you can see there. You can also tap over again to take a look at music, both offline music, so the content that is stored directly on the watch, or I can also connect to my phone and use it like a remote. Let's play a quick demo of a song using the speaker here and turn up the volume. This is stored on the built-in memory of the watch at the moment. And you can also send the music to playback on the phone or also over wireless buds or headphones. You can connect Bluetooth headphones, for example, using Bluetooth to the watch, again, making it a MP3 player if you want to.
So takeaway is the quality using the speaker is okay for a smartwatch. Of course, it doesn't pack too much in terms of bass, but for something so small, it is to be expected. It does actually get louder than I thought, though, which is a nice surprise. Definitely good enough for some occasional songs and using it as a speakerphone, as an alarm, things like that. Over one more panel takes you into your daily activity in terms of steps, number of times that you've been active uh, over a 12-hour period, things like that, and then it just cycles back in this carousel view. We can also take a look back at some workout records that we have performed on the smartwatch, and that allows us to take a quick look at stats, such as number of steps we've taken, altitude using the barometer, there's also heart rate continuously in terms of different zones that we were in during the activity can all be viewed back directly from the watch itself, which is pretty neat. Although one thing that you aren't able to see from the watch uh, is the GPS path that you've taken. For that information, the watch does save, but you can only see it on your phone and it will just be synced over. Again, there is a real built-in GPS chip, which means that it will track your route um, as you're outdoors. Other metrics in the full list of applications include the SpO2 sensor. Sleep also tells you, again, a number of hours that you've slept during the night. And sleep tracking has traditionally been one of the strengths of Honor and Huawei smartwatches and bands, and it remains true here. Total duration slept, as well as all the stages of sleep, like deep versus light versus number of times you were awake, and it also automatically tracks your naps during the day as well. So if I fall asleep right now, it will count that as a nap time uh, automatically without the need to even press on anything. There's also some breathing exercises to tell you to calm down breathing in and out with the visuals on the display pretty simple stuff and also call log which is again taking advantage of the microphone and speaker if you want to answer calls directly from this device it is possible if you are connected to your phone using bluetooth and then finally other things here include a basic barometer can also be viewed back air pressure as well as a compass simple and straightforward but works well enough swiping over on the edge here to exit out and other things like a stopwatch a countdown timer are both just very simple so working as expected here without really any problems overall interaction again for the device is still pretty fluid and also the customization of some of the keys including this button here if you want to remap it to open up something else by default again it's opening up my workouts and sports that I can begin tracking but I might be able to change that into something else like my SBO2 or heart rate if I use those functions more commonly as far as the watch faces are concerned there's plenty of customization that you can find using the companion app and download and save them over to change the look of the watch in fact there's new watch faces populated every day with a growing selection and that's one of the benefits of having a slightly more mature smartwatch ecosystem that Huawei and Honor has been developing for a while now. You can also change some of the widgets that are showing up inside of a watch face as well. So for example, if I don't want to use the weather, I can change that to heart rate, for instance. There's plenty of different attractive looking ones that you can pick between, including ones for different holidays and occasions. Here's a few ones I really like, including a doodle themed one that is super animated and colorful. Some of these are a little bit more power intensive than others, and it will tell you that as well when you are changing between those. Other ones try to imitate more of a black and white or monochrome look and gives you more of a throwback vibe, also pretty effective some which are a bit more artistic and just attractive looking designs overall a bit more moody again the list just really goes on and on again I'm satisfied with the overall fluidity of the smartwatch I didn't really have any frustrating use cases and it feels good enough now one of the specialties of the magic watch too from honor and also Huawei smartwatches in general versus Amazfits is it does have slightly better uh, sports tracking in the sense that it's a bit more actively managed it can actually tell you things as you are performing the sport so for example, if I'm running and I've completed one kilometer, it will also tell me that using the speakers, it will say, congratulations, you've completed one kilometer, keep up the work. Or if I'm falling behind my goal, it will say that, such as try to run faster. So it's a bit more intelligent in terms of giving you active recommendations as you are performing an activity using the loudspeaker. Or if you're wearing headphones, it will just come out privately onto your ears. So this is kind of interesting. So this is inclusive of some of the running courses here basically hit the target of what the exercise and the course is telling you to do. So these active courses is something that you won't find on the Amazfit, which only tells you your heart rate and how long you've been performing that activity. 
But of course, aside from these active courses, there's also a bit more passive ones, which are similar to other smartwatches. These are just tracking your steps, as well as your path, your heart rate, without telling you anything as you are doing it. So this includes running and outdoor walking, cycling, swimming as well. It can also be tracked. There's plenty of options that you can find here with a growing list. Even karate and fencing can be found as well. So a very exhaustive list. In terms of other elements like the battery life, overall, the Magic Watch 2 is also excellent. I was able to get on average about two weeks of usage before I needed to recharge it again. Uh, and that is with sporadic GPS tracking. I find that to be very good, especially compared to an Apple Watch or Android Wear Watch that you may have to charge every day or two. It's going to be a huge benefit. As for the accuracy and performance, the pedometer of the smartwatch is also excellent. I found the accuracy to be pretty much on par with what I got when compared to an Apple Watch. So very good accuracy in terms of the calibration of the accelerometers for the number of steps. Heart rate is also pretty much on point with every single other wearable I tried. Even the GPS, which is working quite well when you're in an outdoor open environment, uh, as long as there's not too much, say, buildings in the area, it will get a lock usually within a minute of you stepping outdoors. And I was able to remain connected. Missing sensors per se here would be uh, perhaps a body temperature monitor, which some of the newer smartwatches are bringing out as a response to, say, COVID. But overall, that's still not going to be really medical grade on any of the other competitors either. So I wouldn't say you're missing out on too much. You can already get kind of a sense using the SPO2 as a gauge of if you're breathing properly or not. The app here is called Huawei Health and if you have a Huawei smartphone or tablet it actually is pre-installed already on the device but you can always find it for free on the App Store, iOS, or Android if you don't currently have it. It is quite simple and it works with all of their smart bands and smart watches that they have. You simply drag down basically to refresh the data and it connects and syncs very quickly using Bluetooth with some additional statistics which are abbreviated if you're looking at it from from only the smartphone can now be accessed on the companion app and just viewed back with more detail. Again, sleep tracking, you can see the full results after you jump into the app, telling you your different stages of sleep, your nap, as well as the sleep score. And this is pretty much identical now to what we also get from the other competitors in the price range. And performance here though is still very accurate and giving you quite a few details that you can analyze, reminding you to sleep earlier or how to get better sleeping habits or certain stages of sleep to improve your score compared to the population. You can also send over music onto the watch's built-in memory from the app as well, and other things include uh, turning on certain functions like how long you want it to take a measurement of your heart rate during the day. Overall, again, it's a simple app but works quite well for storing your data and then viewing them back without really any problems. So that's more or less it as far as our hands-on review of the Huawei Honor Magic Watch 2. It still remains an excellent smartwatch, I think, for the price range. There's plenty to like here, including the beautiful display, as well as the solid construction made out of stainless steel just feels more expensive than the price here would imply. Very good battery life and endurance, uh, great tracking capabilities in terms of lots of sports and actively managed courses that gives you recommendations, built-in GPS, as well as local storage for music, pretty much all the functions that you would want from a sports watch in a stylish and well-built package. You can check out more details if you're interested in the links down below, but for now that's been our video. Thanks for watching here at OS Reviews. It's been the Honor Magic Watch 2.